Hello everyone. I hope you can hear me. We are now live for the first time on Chamber F1. And great, you saw me changing thing. Great. Well, I hope you all had a nice new year. We're now in 2019, which means we can forget about the 2018 season. And now we're going to look forward to what on earth is going to happen this year. Uh, just to clarify, this is not our bingo which definitely will be happening this year some way or another. Um, but instead, I'm going to bring in three other people and we are going to compete to answer 20 questions about the year ahead and see, you know, who is the best prognosticator. Um, now, you're going to have to bear with me because I've never done this before and it's going to be technically all over the place and not as slick as some other streams you may have seen. Um, but I'm going to welcome in I'm going to welcome in our four contributors to this program. Um, obviously, I'm the very first one. By the way, you can hear me, right? Everybody say yes if you can hear me. Good, everybody can hear me. Right. So I'll be competing against Sean from the F1 Word. Hi, Sean. Hello, how are we? Are we good? I think we're good. How are you? How was your new year? Um, more sober than I'd like, but um, that's probably a good thing. But yeah, not bad. How was yours? Very, very relaxed, apart from setting up this live stream, which I've been um, a little nervous about. Good stuff. So it'll all be fine. It'll all be fine. Feeling confident? Um, no. If, if anybody follows the channel, they know that my predictions are generally terrible. So um, no. Great. Well, good luck. Uh, also joining me is John T, who you may also know from the F1 Word. Yes, good evening, Stuart and Sean and everyone. Hey, John T, you feeling confident? I've seen your predictions already. Oh, yeah, I'm feeling super confident. Like Sean said, if anyone follows the F1 Word, you know that my predictions are awesome. Good. Well, good luck for the race ahead, for the race ahead, for the um, challenge ahead. And finally, I'm also bringing in Dan from f1 slash fe reviews which is a very slick name change dan thanks i <laughs> i appreciate that hello good evening everyone it's it's brilliant to be here this this is going to be brilliant this is i mean doing my predictions was a lot of fun i'm going to win you know just getting that out there nice and early but i'll let you go through them first i'm sorry shocked to notice that you didn't put Gro um grosjean for every single answer but <laughs> <laughs> it was an option I, I i thought about it but you know i'm very serious about these sort of things <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to walk through how this all works um, so our audience is aware. Uh, I asked everybody 20 questions about what's going to happen over the next season. Uh, each question has its own scoring system, just to keep it, you know, complicated in the spirit of F1. By the end of the year, we should know the answers to all of the questions I asked. And whoever scores the most points is best pre predictor person. And you get a trophy maybe um so basically i'm expecting a bit of controversy and also for me to muck this stream up along the way but hopefully everybody can hear everyone and we can move on to the first question you all ready yeah yeah, yeah definitely good yeah. question the first then let's start off very very simply i'm gonna ask i asked you how many safety cars full safety cars will be called over the entire season. Uh, virtual safety car doesn't count, and you're going to get three points if you get the exact number, two points if you're one out, and one point for one out. That should be complicated enough, uh, simple enough. Um, and I'll let you know that in 2018, there were 15 safety cars called in total. Um, I may be off by one or two, but I did my best to kind of top them all up. So I'll start since I called this whole mess together. And I'm actually being a bit optimistic and I'm saying there'll only be 13 safety cars. Um, I feel we've got a fairly mature spread this year. What do you think, John T? Well, I've been quite optimistic in the other way, in the spirit of Baku and Crazy Races. I said 20. 20 is quite a lot high. You've gone up by a whole quarter or third. Yeah, I'm, I'm hanging a lot. Uh, I'm expecting a rerun of 
a certain race from in the 90s, which we'll see more of later, that things will just go completely crazy. Okay. Well, actually, I kind of hope you're right. Um, this should be quite a quick question. So I'll just go over to you, Dan. And you've, in a very similar vein, you've given quite a similar answer. Well, I think, Stuart, you're forgetting that, you know, Roman Grosjean's on the grid. So we're not <laughs> looking at 20. We're looking at 21 here. You know, I've gone a bit, I suppose, a bit boring. You know, I'm expecting maybe not one at every single race, but maybe a couple at a Singapore, maybe. So I've gone a little bit boring to start off with. I've gone with uh, 21. Fair enough. And then let's move over to Sean. What have you gone for, Sean? This is quite interesting. I've gone for 19. Um, which is, it seems quite high, but my thinking behind that is that we've got a grid that if Williams step up and McLaren step up is going to be closer this year. And so more drivers in close proximity might equal more crashes. So 19. Yeah, you've all gone fairly similarly, which made me quite nervous. But see, my thinking was people, they're trying to sort of lean more towards virtual safety car. And if I'm more right, that puts me at quite an advantage compared to you guys. Whereas you, you're all quite close. You'll have to sort of share points. Ah. <laughs> but then if 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 you are right i get nothing but anyway hang on a minute there's a big going live across the whole screen just give me one second there we go okay let's move on to the next question which because that was quite an easy one to get out of the way first i then asked you the last few years have been dominated by Red Bull, Mercedes and Ferrari. So I'm asking you, what percentage of all possible points will go just to these top three teams? You're going to get one point to the person with the closest answer. And if you get exactly right to the nearest percent, you're going to get two bonus points. Looking back at 2018, we can see that the top three teams took 80% of all points, which is um, higher than any in the last five years. So this time, first of all, I'm going to look at you, John T. What did you think? Again, I've been wildly optimistic. I'm, I'm trying to predict the season that everyone desperately wants to see, and I've gone with 65. That That is pretty optimistic. That is a, a decent job. You think... Do you, do you, are you, is that what you're hoping for, or do you actually believe the top three teams will lose some of their... well, dominance? It, that's a different. I certainly hope for it. Whether I actually believe it or not remains to be seen. Um, we'll get more of an idea in February when the launch is come. Well, but I, I'm really, really optimistic and hopeful. Well, that's good. That's what we need from F1 fans these days. All right, let's see what your contemporaries think. Dan, what did you go with? Uh, I wasn't so positive as John T was, unfortunately. Um, it, I found this one hard, I'm not going to lie, because I think Mercedes and Ferrari will definitely be the top two. And I think with that Honda switch with Red Bull, I think there'll be a little bit of a gap there, more so than there was this year. But I've gone higher than John T, and I've gone with 79%. So not quite as much as 2018, because I think Red Bull will not be in that midfield battle as such, but I think they could have some reliability issues, so they might lose some points there. So not quite as dominant as this year, but very close. Yeah, that is basically 80%. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, not quite as optimistic as John T, but let's see what Sean thought would happen this year. See, rather concerningly, I've been thinking the same as Dan, which is a real worry, genuinely a worry, um, that Honda will be point. fairly unreliable at the start of the season, so that's going to hit... Red Bull quite hard on points, so I think seventy-four percent I went with in the end. Yeah, I can see what you're thinking there. So you're yeah, a little bit more optimistic, but not quite to the level of John T's. I'll tell you what I went for. I went for seventy-two, which is quite similar to you. Um my thinking is I think you're gonna see a pattern through predictions, is that I am really unsure about what Red Bull's gonna be able to do with that Honda engine, because we have absolutely no idea. And just how strong teams like Renault and whatever Force India become will end up being and I think you know apart from you Dan I think most <laughs> you're right in um, thinking that, that that gap between Red Bull and the others will start to close up but we'll see we'll probably see in about three months time rather than in December <laughs> alright moving on to question three I want you to name every single driver that will step onto the podium this year and you can name as many drivers as you like but you'll get one point for everyone you get correct 
every everyone you get right and you'll lose one point for everyone you get wrong so you really don't want to name every single driver or that will cost you unless it's a really good year um in 2018 there were seven drivers that stepped on the podium obviously the drivers of the top three teams and perez now dan you're up first this time how optimistic are you well i i'm not gonna lie i was very optimistic at first and then i read in the small print that we lose a point and i thought <laughs> whoa, whoa whoa i don't want to get carried away here don't want to get too carried away i'll go safe i won't go crazy so i think as a lot of us have we've gone for the two mercedes boys the two ferrari boys i've gone with the two red bulls because i think at tracks like monaco and mexico they'll still have a good run but i've also gone with the smiley aussie himself daniel ricardo I'd love to see him back on the podium. And yes, he had a, a dodgy year this year due to reliability. But I think if there's a little bit of a crazy race going on, I can imagine with some crazy dive bombs as well, he'll be standing up there. I did initially put Lance Stroll on that list as well. But like I say, that one point deduction, that, that scared me off a little bit. And spotting a pattern here, you are definitely not feeling as optimistic about the next season as John T is. <laughs> <laughs> um, but let's see what Sean thought. I think it's fair to say you'll have a similar first six drivers, Sean. Yeah, and then beyond that, I, I must have been drinking because I think I went a bit crazy after that. So we've got both the Merc boys, both the Ferrari boys, and both the Red Bull boys, obviously. But then I've gone and put Stroll and Perez in there. Um, I think Ricardo's going to nick one as well if we get a crazy race. And if that Honda is a little bit shaky at the start of the season, might be able to pick up the odd podium. Um, and Kimi Raikkonen as well as my wild card. So, yeah, I think I went a bit mad. And now seeing the minus one point for every wrong answer, I'm a little bit concerned. I've just thrown my entire thing away now in one question. It's interesting. I, you know, I definitely told you what the points system would be, but this is really, really interesting to see. I, I quite like your your wild card in Kimi Raikkonen. You, you really don't know what that was going to do in Kimi's hands. So why not? And again... You, 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 you for could argue it was the fourth fastest car at the end of the season this year. So if they can develop further, then why not grab a po crazy race, a Baku, maybe? Why not? I mean, I would definitely like to see Kimi on the podium next year. That would definitely um, shut up a few people who told him to retire. All right, I guess it's down to me again. Um, so I've gone pretty similar with what you guys have done, um, especially you, Sean. But instead of Raikkonen, my less than wild card is Magnussen um, I think he's really he really stepped up last year as I think we all agreed when we reviewed the season so I'd be very surprised if he wasn't up there in his um, shiny rich energy emblazoned machine and finally you John T <laughs> <laughs> I know what you've put yeah, um, yeah I I can put them up on the screen now if you want to talk through your, your thoughts. Yeah. Again, Mr. Optimistic. You know, this is what we want to see, and let's hope it carry, let's hope it happens. I've got, obviously, the top six, but then both the four Indias. I still believe Hulkenberg will get that podium. So hopefully soon. And I was always going to pick a Haas, but it had to be Magnuson just to have a little dig it down. <laughs> I didn't think about that, but I went similarly. Uh, Kubica, again, I, I'm just holding on to that fairy story. You know, if he gets a podium on his on his year back, who knows? Uh, Raikkonen's actually the sensible one, to be quite honest. You'll see that later. But if either of the Sauber drivers are going to get one, it's going to be him, isn't it? But think about the points. If something insane happens, I'm winning it. I mean, I really like your thinking. Some people, when they make Formula 1 predictions, they sort of predict against what they hope. So they can hedge their bets. Either way, they win. Either way, they get something they want or they win predictions. But you, you're just putting everything in one basket. I like that. I'm, I'm kind of good that I didn't add a tour or also driver in there now, so there's one from everyone. I can see the chat is really enjoying your pick of Kubica. They're definitely, um, definitely fully agree with you, John T. All right, moving on to the next question. I'm going to ask you who the most improved driver over the course of the season is going to be. And I'm going to measure it in a very specific way. And that way is by determining who has the largest increase in points by percentage from the last ra 10 races to the, from the first 10 races to the last 10 races. That might sound a bit complicated first, so I'll sort of explain how that works. So in 2018, in the first 10 races, Verstappen scored 93 points. 
we're going to ignore the 11th race. In the last 10 races, he scored 144 points, which meant he had a 55% increase in points in the second half of the season. Hartley, meanwhile, scored one point in the first 10 races and two points in the last 10 races, which means he had a 100% increase in points. And in fact, Hartley was the quote marks most improved driver in 2018 alongside Leclerc who had 13 and 26 points respectively so Sean who do you think will be the most improved driver by percentage of points well I think I've messed this up right royally I think um, so too but good luck listen to your explanation there um, I'm going to go Lewis Hamilton because he's going to score nothing for the first 10 races apparently and then win every single race yeah I messed that up I'm sorry when I saw that I thought does Sean think Hamilton's going to have like a really unlucky first half of the season and then just score like 400 points in the second half? <laughs> well, when I read it, my f- my first thought was, well, hang on a minute, look at the last two years and how he's been after the summer break. And I thought, well, he's going to ramp up. But then I realised that it was, yeah, never mind. Um, Hamilton, but that's definitely zero points. Well, he c- yeah, if he could have a really bad first half of the season. You just, you, n- you don't know. This could come back to you, Sean. Um, whereas I've put Giovinazzi bit of a shot in the dark but I thought I'd go for a rookie who might have some time finding his feet in the first half of the season and then really sort of come into his own a little bit in what should be some pretty decent machinery. John T what have you thought? I've kind of gone the same direction but I've gone with Raikkonen because he's going to be driving the development of that team and if they keep that development going you know the same as they have this year by the end of next year they'll be fighting for podiums. Oh, okay, so you think he'll sort of have a steady first half of the year and then by that by the second half of the year he'll have developed the car so much that it'll be handfuls of points every race. That's what I'm hoping. That'd be very interesting. I'd like to see that. What about you, Dan? Yeah, I've gone down the same route as you and John T. I'm sorry, Sean. I think you're a little bit off there. Um, <laughs> I've gone with yeah, I've gone with Alex Albon. Uh, similar sort of ideas to you two. I think Torosso might have a bit of a shaky start to the season, but I think like you said about last year Brendan Hartley you know maybe Albon can get up a couple of points at the beginning of the year but then maybe later on this season reliability may be a little bit better I'm hoping I think he could snatch a few more so I've gone with uh, Alex Albon a wise choice I think Um, good luck to you Sean Uh, this might not be your question maybe not but if that comes true we need to get together and come up with something I've got to do Uh, (laughs) because that, that would be incredible that would be incredible All right, let's move on to our next question which is driver of the day don't let this picture sway you um it can't because you've already asked answered the questions but nonetheless so which driver will get the most official driver of the day victories and you'll get two points if you identify them no need to explain this i'm going to go straight into this i'm going leclerc Uh, i think he was very popular last year and now he's going to have the full might of the tifosi behind him as well as being more focused on during the races getting himself into scraps hopefully being the Leclerc we want him to be and getting those driver of the day votes at the end of the race Um, but John T what do you think Uh, I thought sensibly on this one for a change (laughs) the guy on screen it just happens all the time we've even had videos from other people making a joke about how often he wins it so it's it's a done deal already so you're just going with the, the might of the Netherland Massive continuing there Orange Absolutely. Yeah, Orange Army. Fair enough. Now, Dan, what are you going with? All right. I still think it's crazy that none of us have done any of the same predictions so far. I'm going to continue that trend. I've gone with Kimi Raikkonen. So, again, I think similar to what you both have said, I think he's got that popularity behind him. But I also think a lot of people that would have voted for Alonso, obviously now he's retired, I think a lot of those votes you know, on the popularity side of things I think will shift over to Kimi. And I think being in that midfield scrap, like you guys said earlier, he might be, might be on the podium. We never know. So, yeah, I can see him getting quite a few votes this year. I think he'll have a solid season. Yep, I understand that logic. That's very interesting. What about you, Sean? I don't think this needs too much of an explanation. It's it's got to be Maximus. I think that's where it'll go. So Verstappen for me. You think once Verstappen, always Verstappen. No, I can see that. He's going to be very hard to topple as the king of driver of the day. That's very fair enough. Okay. I then asked you. Before I explain this question, (laughs) when I made this slide, 
and saw those Alonzo masks, I suddenly realised how jowly he looks. Like it's an illusion, but it looks like his cheeks are incredibly saggy and it made me laugh. So now you all have to see that too. Um, anyway, my question to you is, which drivers will leave F1 in 2019? Again, you can answer as many as you like. You'll get one point for every correct answer and lose one point for every wrong answer. Um, the stipulation being, you know, they just have to have a drive this year and lose that drive and not be on the grid at the start of next year. It doesn't matter if they come back later or anything, they just have to have lost their drive. So, John T, who have you picked? Um, I'm on Bottas, Perez and Hulkenberg. That's an interesting uh, mix. Perez, in, especially. That was kind of a shot in the dark. Um, Hulkenberg, I've got this idea in my head that he'll just get his podium and go, right, finally, that's it, I'm done. Um, Perez, I've got this horrible feeling that there's going to be a lot of infighting because of um, Daddy and Kitty Stroll, and Perez won't like it. And Bottas, I think we all know, is under massive pressure. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I can't necessarily, necessarily say he'll uh, leave F1, but I definitely agree he's in a precarious position. Uh, what about you, Dan? Who have you picked? I I, <laughs> I forgot I, uh, I did these choices. Um <laughs> I feel, oh, I'm going to have to be brave to say this. So I've gone with Danny Kubiak. That one's fine. Um, I, don't, I don't think they'll keep him on at the end of year. Toro, so I think Albin will do the better job. And I think they're really trying to push Dan Tictum into that team. So unfortunately for Kubiak, I don't see him staying at the end of the year. But the other one, oh, God, uh, <laughs> is Robert Kubitzer. I've gone with Robert Kubitzer. Please don't hate me, chat. Please don't. Um, I think with all the transfer market the way it was this year, I think Esteban Ocon is going to come back into Formula One. He deserves to. And I'm not saying Kubica doesn't, but I think he will be the one that ends up getting chopped off the grid. And I think even if, okay, Ocon does go to Force India or even Mercedes, I think someone else will jump into that Williams seat. A bold choice. And you're being loved in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> All right, Sean, what have you got? Right. Um, one of these is definitely not a dig at Dan, by the way. Um, I think <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying not to. Uh, Bottas. I think if he's he's probably the only one out of these that's in danger mid-season. I don't think Mercedes will. I think it would be a big a big surprise. But if he doesn't step up, then he might. So I think Bottas will be out of a seat at the end of 2019. Roman Grosjean. I think this is probably his last chance. He's got to nail every race we sorted in 2018 at times. So. Uh, sorry Dan mate he's got to get it right I think we've discussed that before actually to be fair uh, that he really needs to step up this year so I'm going to say Grosjean and Kimi Raikkonen to retire because for whatever reason in my head when he signed that two year Sauber deal I just laughed and I was like you're not going to do two years no way so I think he'll go at the end of this year um, into retirement can't argue with any of those thoughts sorry Dan um, I can't remember my last so I'm going to bring them up on screen um, I again went with Bottas quite similar reasons I think he's under tremendous pressure and there's not many places for him to go if Mercedes slash when Mercedes get rid of him and he may at least have to take a sabbatical year um Kvyat similar reasons to Dan I think he's I, I think he's basically just minding that seat while Toro so sort out their um their queue of drivers who will be running through that team and again Grosjean yeah I think he's he's <sighs> this is his last chance this is basically a short as, as Sean said, this is kind of his last chance and I hope he proves me wrong and I hope he suddenly becomes a shining superstar and nails all the races, but I think he's sort of run into a bit of a cul-de-sac there. So, sorry about that. I think Perez is the wildest card on the board, to be honest. Well, no, you think about it, with the whole stroll thing going on, Perez should he expect to be number one driver, but that ain't going to happen. Well, it'd be very interested to see what happens. Let's have a look at the next question. I'll try not to keep you here forever. Right, this is about retirements, but not retirements in terms of career, but retirements on races. And I want you to tell me which race will have the most retirements. And you get two points for this if you get it right. In 2018, Baku and Spain both had six retirements. No race had more than that, which is quite incredible, really. Oh, that surprised me when I looked it up. First up to the chopping block, Dan. Okay, I might. I don't want to say I've gone boring with this, but a race which is usually a little bit boring, which I hope this year is a little bit spicier, is Monaco. So I suppose Monaco is synonymous with the close barriers, and I suppose 
throughout history in Formula One, we have seen some big smashes, but the past couple of years, it's been a little bit dull. You know, we had that Ricardo's engine not working this year, which was fine. But no, this year we're going to see some big smashes. Lap one, we're going to see some big smashes throughout the race. That's going to be the one. I've gone with Monaco. Yeah, I can understand that tight street circuit. And the last couple of years, it's suffered because you can't overtake, so no one's really pushing themselves. But hopefully with these new rings, maybe you'll be right. Um, Sean? I have been quite boring, um, and I've <laughs> gone with Baku. There, there seems to be something, if you ignore 2016, obviously, there seems to be something in the air in Azerbaijan that gets the drivers a little bit too excited, and we see a bit of chaos and a bit of carnage. So I've just got a feeling that's what we're going to get from Baku most years maybe not to the levels of 2017 where we got a stroll on the podium for example but i still think that's going to be crazy and that'll have the most retirements for me yep yeah, can't fault your logic there um and actually i've also gone with baku mostly the same reasons very very high speed very twiddly um I, I can't imagine we won't see an array of crashes but will it be beaten jaunty yeah i mean this ties into my safety cars one i'm just got this feeling I'm going to have a repeat of Belgium 98 so I've gone with Spa yeah you have gone very different to the rest of us not chosen the street track but gone for something more classic absolutely I mean we all saw what happened in 98 when the all but three cars got minced so that could happen again I'd like to see that I think we're due a bit more Belgian madness we haven't had some in a while let's move on to the yeah. next question which I've called Moving On Up. And I've asked you which driver will gain the most positions from Lights the Flag over the whole season. Again, two points for the correct driver. Uh, the way this works is if a driver lines up on the grid 18th and they finish in 12th, that'll add six points. Whereas if they start 12th and finish 18th, that will subtract six points from their score. If they don't finish, that'll just count as zero. We're not gonna count races where they didn't finish. So basically, over the course of the whole season, we're going to add up all these, um, either making their way up or down through the field, and who has the greatest net score. Sean, you're up first. Okay, so I did understand this one, so that's good, good but hear good. me out on this. Um, I've gone Max Verstappen, and the reason I've gone Verstappen is because, again, as we were saying earlier, I think Honda, I don't think they're going to be terrible this year, but I think there will be some reliability problems. And as we saw throughout 2018, that boy can make his way through the field very nicely when he wants to. The US is a prime example of that. So I think he'll start out of position a few times, a few dodgy qualifiers because of penalties, and I can see him make up the most of the course of the season. So yeah, Max again for me. Yep, can't fault that. And I actually picked the same for the, exactly the same reasons. Strong driver, it'll be a strongest car, but the reliability issues will start coming into play and dropping him down the grid. John T. The chat's going to love this. I went with Robert Kubica. <laughs> What's your thinking? Well, the chance that that car's not going to be great, but they've also got form. Uh, the last couple of years, Lance Stroll's been the person to gain the most or second most positions on lap one. Admittedly, he hasn't converted it to the end of the race, but that chance is there. And Kubica is known for his racecraft. So, yeah, I can see where you're coming from. Um, what about you, Dan? You see, I like your reasoning there, John T. So I have gone with Lance Stroll. You know, I think he's not the best qualifier. We know this. He's he's going to be struggling against those Renaults. I, I can even see him maybe going behind the McLarens. He's not the best at qualifying. But on lap one, for some reason, this guy seems to be pretty good on lap one. And I think in a racing point car, which will be, I'm, I'm hoping it will be better than this year's Williams, I think he could be able to keep those positions and maybe, like you guys have been talking about, the Honda engine not being so great, take advantage of the likes of Gasly and Verstappen maybe retiring through the race. So even though, again, probably a little bit boring that he's done it the last couple of years, but I'm going to go with Lance Stroll. Yeah, fair enough. And uh, so two different philosophies going into this question. It'll be interesting to see which pays off. And we probably won't have a good idea about this until the end of the season. So I'll be interested to look back at this one. Next up... A new lick of paint. And this one's going to be contentious, and I can see arguments over this one. But I'm asking you which teams will launch with significantly different liveries in 2019. Again, you can pick as many as you like with one point for every correct answer and losing a point for every wrong answer. So just to sort of set the stage for how what we might consider significantly different liveries, and already this is going to be controversial. 
So in 2018, I considered these teams to have significantly different liveries. Salbo went to a different colour scheme. Red Bull launched with their camo. I say launched. Uh, McLaren changed it up. Haas went from their horrible grey livery to a white livery. And Renault, even though they had the same colour scheme, did change it into, into a very nice rearrangement. So I'll give them half a point. Um, you can argue about it all you like. Those are my stipulations. Oh, I get to go first. So I've gone with Haas, McLaren, Williams and Force India. Um, obviously Haas have got the rich energy sponsorship coming in, so they're going to look horrible, but black gold. I think McLaren are still working out the kinks in their livery, so I wouldn't be surprised to see them changing it up a bit and making it a bit more exciting. Uh, Williams losing Martini, so they'll probably go back to their blue livery, and um, I'm calling them Force India, but who knows what they'll be called. Um, I got really confused about what their BWT situation is, so I wouldn't be surprised to see a change there. But John T, what do you think? Well, I've got the same four as you and Salva, but I've actually thought sensibly about this because Williams are going to be red and white because they've got the uh, Polish oil company sponsorship through Kibitza, and McLaren have some, at the end of last year signed a big sponsorship deal with Coca-Cola, so there could well be some red in there as well. Salva I, is just a hope and a pray because this year's livery, whilst kind of sleek and stylish, it was very, very boring. Okay, fair enough. I like how you throw in the little optimistic ones every now and again. I hope that pays off for you. <laughs> what about you, Dan? Yeah, I wasn't as optimistic. Well, I say optimistic. I quite like a little livery change, but I've gone with Haas. I think I'm assuming we've all put that. I've gone with Williams and I've gone with Force India or Racing Point or whatever. I almost put Ferrari. I almost took the plunge <laughs> but thought, you know what? I'm not going to be that crazy. I'm not going to be that silly. So that's what I've gone with for now. And I hope I'm not wrong. That's very fair enough. And what about you, Sean? Well, obviously I've gone with Haas. I think everybody, yeah, we've all gone with Haas. It's obvious. Um, Williams as well. I've gone with Sauber because I've got a feeling that they are going to go um, a little bit more alpha red or kind of a bit like John T, actually. I'm hoping they're going to go alpha red. But I am. I don't want to be that guy. Um, but Otmar Safanauer has already said that next year's racing point will be pink. So um, I'm just going to leave that out there. <laughs> right, I see. So you're the one paying attention and that could pay off for you. Unless they just completely restyle their pink livery. Time will tell. They say a lot of things, though, to be fair, Force India, don't they? So who That knows? is true. We have heard a lot of weird shit from them. I mean, a lot of weird stuff from them the last year. Wow, blew that already. Right. <laughs> Moving on. The Spanish Expedition. So this isn't F1 related, but I think a lot of us will be tracking how Alonso does over the next year. So I'm asking you, which of the following will Alonso win in 2019? Daytona. Indy 500, Le Mans 24 hour, and the WEC title. Starting with John T. Uh, this is <laughs> an optimistic <laughs> but fairly easy answer. All four. Is that a belief or just a hope? Um, no, I do genuinely believe it. Indy, he pretty much had in the bag in 2018, apart from uh, Honda Engine. Oof, never mind and the WEC title and Le Mans already done that yep fair enough uh, I think we're going to see some similar answers from the rest of us starting with Dan well my limited knowledge of these four events yeah. last series didn't didn't help me too much here um, I went a little bit more boring than John T which I feel like I'm saying a lot today so that's not good but I've only gone with Le Mans and the WEC title I mean like I said I don't really know too much about a lot of them but I know that that car is pretty overpowered in the WEC so I expect him to be there or thereabouts and the Daytona Indy 500 I thought well I've got to <laughs> do some crazy predictions somewhere yeah fair enough I think those are the safe bets, as I think Sean will agree. Yeah, same as Dan. He's he's basically won WEC anyway, hasn't he? Um, oh, sorry, WEC title. I don't want to say WEC. Um, and I think he'll win Le Mans, but I don't see him winning the Indy 500 with McLaren or whatever they're going to call that because it's McLaren. Um, and <laughs> I'm just not sure about the Daytona either. So, yeah, I'm just going to go with the, the obvious two. Play it safe. Yeah, and very similarly, I also went for those two. I went for the safe option, the WEC and the Le Mans 24 hour next year. I don't know enough about Daytona and I just I wasn't brave enough to tick Indy even though I really really wanted to so John T this could swing either way for you because the rest of us are getting the same points good luck uh, I'm very disappointed you you guys have no faith in the <laughs> Chevrolet engine we shall see next up 
Rookie of the Year. Again, there could be some contention about this when we argue it out later on. But I put which, which driver will be rightly considered to be Rookie of the Year 2019 with two points up for grabs. I've explicitly labelled the contenders. It's Albon, Giovinazzi, Norris and Russell. So Kubica doesn't count, for example, because he's been in F1 before properly. This time Dan's up first. Who's your pick? I really wanted to say George Russell. I really like George Russell. I think out of those four drivers, I think he is the best driver, but I think he might go under the radar a little bit in that Williams. And so I've gone with Lando Norris, someone who I think, like I say, he's not quite on Russell's level, I don't think, just yet. But I think that McLaren will be a step up from the Williams. And I think he will be scoring points on a more regular basis. And I think if there is a bit of a carnage race and he does maybe fluke a podium, I know I didn't say that earlier on, but, you know, I was scared of losing points. But if that does happen, then I think people in the public eye will definitely notice him a lot more. And I think within the community, we might say, oh, actually, Norris is as good a driver as Russell. So I've gone with Norris. But it, it's very close between the two. I think this is one of the hardest questions to, to answer. So yeah. I'm nothing against you. Sean, what did you pick I've probably surprisingly gone with Giovinazzi. I think the experience of Kimi Raikkonen, he's going to learn from him nicely. Kimi's going to deal with all the development of that car so he can just turn up and chill and go racing. He was pretty good in his FP1 outings this year. So I think he's a bit of a dark horse there. So I've gone with Gio. Very interesting pick. Uh, you're not concerned about the, um, the Van Dorn effect of being in the shadow of Raikkonen? Oh, leave stuff alone. Uh, <laughs> no, no. I, I honestly think he'll be he'll be fine. I think he'll do really well. Um, I wanted to go with one of the Brit boys, but I don't trust McLaren, and I don't think Williams are going to make the step up that they maybe think they will. No, that's fair enough. Now I've gone with Russell, and uh, I hummed and hard about this, but I I went to take the gamble because I think he was the strongest driver out of the wall in the lower series. Possibly, I don't know enough about the lower series, but. I, I feel like he was the strongest driver of them all, even though he'll be somewhat under the radar. Again, Williams are a bit of an unknown. You're never gonna, sure if they're going to turn up with a strong package or not from year to year. So, to be honest, this is a bit of a gamble on the hope. John T. Uh, sorry to spoil it for those in chat, but I've also gone with Gio. It's the most logical choice. The, the steps that Sauber were making last year were just enormous, and that could only carry on. Even though I do say that Russell is by far the best driver there, he just won't have the car to be able to do it. Well, I very much look forward to the argument about this at the end of the year. <laughs> uh, I might need to run a poll. Um, up next, I'm actually not sure what question number we're on, so I hope we're running to time. Um, in this one, I'm asking you to name the Winter Champions, which is the team that will come out of winter testing looking the strongest. Um, there are some really interesting answers come out of this one, but there's only two points of the correct team. Sean? I've gone Mercedes. Um, it's probably really obvious, but Ferrari have a tendency to sandbag in winter testing. So I don't think we're going to see their raw pace. And I think Red Bull are going to be concentrating quite a bit on reliability and making sure that Honda is, is solid. So I went Mercedes. I think maybe a bit safe, could have been a bit more exciting, but yeah, I've, I've got to get something right at some point. So That's fair enough. Go okay. I mean, I can't disagree with that. Or can I? Because I went with Ferrari. I think... The last few years, Ferrari have come out of the stable pretty hot. Um, and they've tended to get weaker as the year has gone on. So I am i don't think Ferrari want anything bad to happen next year. I think they're going to enter fully prepared and turn up looking pretty strong through the testing. John T? Uh, I'll mix things up and gone with Renault. You really have. <laughs> I really have. Um, we all know Mercedes, Ferrari, even Red Bull, they love to play the games, do the sandbagging. Renault have really got something to prove with the engine issues and Danny Rick coming on board. So I think they're just going to go out and say, yeah, look, we're awesome. Well, kudos for you for going out of left field a bit. No, fair enough. I'd like to see that happen. What about you, Dan? I agree with you, Stuart. I've gone Ferrari as well. You know, Sean, you talk about the sandbag and things like that. I just don't see it happening this year. There's so much change, so much positivity about Ferrari. But I, I just think they're going to have that edge this year. And, okay, maybe come the second half of the season, Mercedes might have caught up with them. But 
really, I, I don't know why, there's something about this team with Charles Leclerc that I think is going to be special this year and I think they'll kick it off in testing and I think they'll be the team to beat. Absolutely fair enough. Right, let's rush on to the next question. Title decider. I want you to tell me which race the driver's title will be won. Again, just two points for this one. Oh, look, I start. I've gone in optimistic. I've gone with Abu Dhabi. I'm... Ferrari have been there or thereabouts the last two years and I think we are really hoping that this is the year that Ferrari or maybe another team will take Mercedes all the way to the end. So optimistic, hopeful, but hopefully correct as well. John T. Yeah, I've gone the same as you. Really hopeful that it goes down to the wire and we get some spectacular race out of it. We had a great race in 2018, let's be honest. So if they can be a title decider, even better. Excellent. And what about you, Dan? I agree as well. <laughs> <laughs> I've been positive as well. And to put a spin on it, I think we might see more than two drivers in the fight by the time we get to Abu Dhabi. So this looks oh, like a fun one. Finally, the screw this up, Sean. <laughs> it's finally come out. Hey, Sean, what have you gone with? From a selfish YouTube perspective, I'd like Abu Dhabi because it would make the end of the year a little bit more interesting and help the views. Um, but from a personal perspective, I, I want Brazil, so I've gone with Brazil. I'm sorry to ruin the uh, the nice little graphic there and put another one in there, but I think Brazil, <laughs> I think 21 races, they seem to get wrapped up a lot earlier now, but I think a crazy race in Brazil would be very, very nice. So that's the way I went, really. Um, no real logic other than that's what I want. <laughs> I'm enjoying the people who are injecting the optimism into their answers and sort of damning the safe answer Sean you're all over the place with this <laughs> I'm terrible absolutely terrible at least I understood that question though so true all right next up the wooden spoon I want you to tell me which team will come last in the constructor standings and how many points they'll get you're going to get two points for the correct team and if you get that you get a bonus three points for getting the correct points as well John T what are your thoughts see Again, super optimistic, hoping that McLaren and Williams bring something special. I've gone with Toro Rosso for 12 points. Also thinking that maybe they will become sort of even more of a test bench for Honda now that Red Bull are using them. Yeah, I can totally understand where you're coming from with that. It's, yeah, especially if Red Bull start using them the way we've expected them to. Um, Dan, similar thoughts maybe? I'm a bit gobsmacked, actually. <laughs> well, I've gone exactly the same as John T. Toroso, and also 12 points. You're uh, kidding. No. <laughs> I've gone exactly the same, which is a bit crazy. Um, again, yeah, similar thoughts to John T. I thought they'd be pretty poor last season. They had a good start to the year, but really drifted off at the end. So I think they'll struggle, especially Danny Kubiak. So, <laughs> yeah, I've gone, I've gone exactly the same. I can totally see the logic you guys have gone for. Now, Sean, you broke in lockstep. Sean um, yeah I've gone Williams with 15 points I don't think they're going to make that much of a step up um, I doubt the money is there that they keep talking about they've lost Martini as well yeah Kubitz is in the bit of money there but um, I think they're in a bit of trouble I think they'll do better I think with the midfield and the pack is going to be closer anyway so I think we could have seven teams consistently fighting for points this year but I just think just over double the points they got this year but still rock bottom for me and I'm really not happy with the Toro Rosso hate boys um, I think they're going to be fine especially if that Honda's anywhere near as powerful as they're, they're claiming it will be so yeah we'll see uh, yeah while I can't see but while I can see the logic in where they're coming from with Toro Rosso I've gone with you but three points more optimistic Williams with 18 points um, I'm not really able to foresee where Williams are going to find that extra step up unless they just unlock something magical with Paddy Lowe's engineering. But let's move on to the next question, which I've called Gruntiest Horses, in which I'm asking you which engine manufacturer will score the greatest average points. Two points for getting the correct engine supplier. Just looking at 2018, Ferrari scored a total of 712 points with their three teams, so that's 237 points on average per team. Mercedes scored 714 over their three teams, which is an average of 238. And Renault scored 603 over their three teams, which is 201. Honda scored 33. But remembering that Honda have one more team and Renault have one less team, in 2019, Dan, who do you think will be the gruntiest horse? 
Well, my gruntiest horse is not the prancing <laughs> horse. <laughs> I'm, I'm going with Mercedes. Um, again, it's a, a little bit of a, a wild shout in the sense that you could say, you know, you two boys last time said that Williams is going to be at the bottom of the pecking order and that could bring it down quite a bit. But I'm optimistic about Williams and I think that will elevate Mercedes just a little bit. So, again, this was probably one of the ones I found harder to choose, but I, I've gone with Mercedes. That's absolutely fair enough. Sean, what have you gone with? It's got to be Ferrari. I have to go Ferrari. Uh, Williams, I don't expect much from them this year, as I've said a thousand times. So um, I hope I've got that across. <laughs> I seem to have. Um, I think Ferrari and Mercedes will be very little between them. I think Haas have got a great chance of being strong again and Sauber are only going to improve. So it's Ferrari for me. Uh, I have similarly gone Ferrari. Um, I think if you noticed in 2018, Ferrari and Mercedes got very, very similar points as... Uh, engine suppliers and even though Mercedes as a team had much more points than Ferrari the difference was made up in their secondary teams um, and as I'm foreseeing Ferrari the team to be much closer to Mercedes um, I therefore think overall they'll score more points what about you John T? I've also gone with Ferrari it's just the most logical choice especially with the Sauber and the Haas constantly improving yeah I mean I can't disagree with that I'm enjoying these ones where we're all in lockstep apart from one person <laughs> that could put a swing in things when we toss up the points at the end of the year let's have a look at the next question and I'm going to ask you about quali dominance and the question is which driver will outqualify their teammate the most over the whole year and by how much so you're going to get two points for the correct driver and two points for the correct ratio um, and just to clarify, if there are some driver, driver swaps, the new driver will inherit the old driver's qualifying points, if that makes sense. So, Sean, what do you think? I've gone with Checo, um, 16.5, which seems really harsh, harsh on Lance Stroll, but he's not the best qualifier. He's, he's been saying that this last few weeks and so have Force India, so I've, I've got to go Perez, 16.5, but... Yeah, more on the fact that Stroll's not a great qualifier than Perez is amazing, if that makes sense. Yeah, I can feel that. Um, I've went with Hamilton, and I have to have this because I, th I really thought you should go with a, a, a sort of a lower team. But I think, I think this could be the end game for Bottas, and I think he's really going to lose his mojo. So I've gone Hamilton fifteen to six. I think he's going to walk all over Bottas this year, and that will open up the door to that Mercedes second seat. John T, what are your thoughts? So I've gone further down again and picked a driver who's really got something to prove, even more so than Bottas. And I'm with Kvyat over Albon, 18-3, to because I think Kvyat has always been super fast and pretty good at qualifying. And also in qualifying, there's no one for him to torpedo into. That, when I saw that, I was like, really, Kvyat? But you're right. In qualifying, he's just on his own. He can't get into too much trouble, we hope. And Dan, what have you gone with? So earlier I upset the Qubits of fans, but I'm going to hit... This is for you, Verstappen fans. I've gone with Max Verstappen. Uh, a little bit of a an out there choice. I haven't done that much today, so I better do it nearer the end. But I think it, it's a difficult one because Gasly's not an awful driver. But if you look at the difference between Verstappen and Ricardo this year, it's actually quite alarming how Verstappen... Actually, I don't want to say destroyed Ricardo, but you could argue that. And I think... Gasly's a solid driver. He's going to be the number two. And I think Verstappen is only going to get better this year. And I've gone with 18-3, the ratio. That is really interesting. And of these ones, I my gut feeling is yours is the riskiest. But I'll be really interested to see what happens. Kvyat, though. Wow. <laughs> okay. Let's move on to the next question, though. Which I've called the Formula 1.5 champion. Now, I could have asked this in a number of ways but I've gone with which driver not from Mercedes Ferrari or Red Bull will score the most championship points fully aware that Red Bull might not be the third best team next year if that Honda engine is all over the place nonetheless this is the criteria oh I'm up first I've gone for a pretty safe solid bet in Ricardo in that I think that Renault team is on the ascendancy and could do some really nice things next year and Ricardo is the team is the uh is the driver to lead it so I'm going with Ricardo. John T. 
Uh, I'm going with Perez. Kind of picking it as a safe bet because it's worth two points and I looked at my earlier answers and thought, maybe I've been a bit crazy. Okay, I can see what you're doing. You got you can't be all over the place every single time. What about you, Dan? See, my heart tells me Grosjean. It, it really wanted me to put it, but my head tells me to go with you and put Ricardo. You know, I, th- I think that is the sensible option. I think Renault will be best of the rest, and even a little bit close with Red Bull on their day. So yeah, I've gone Danny Rick as well. Yeah, I thought of all the questions, this was the one where you were going to put Grosjean, but no, he will be disappointed when he hears about this. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Sean? Yeah, I, Ricardo, for all the reasons you guys have said, I think we know he's quick. We know he can overtake some of those awesome dive bombs we've seen. And if he's in the midfield, which he will be at times, then it's going to be good to watch. But I think with his experience at Red Bull and we all know what he can do, I just just going to have the edge. But I think I can't put two I know, but I think Perez would have been my second pick because it's it's going to be between Racing Point and Renault for me. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how those two teams compete with each other. Um, I'm also finding it interesting that Jonty's safe choice is completely different to everyone else's. <laughs> but we'll see if he's right. Maybe it's not so safe. <laughs> <laughs> Our next question concerns Liberty, and this is the most open question on the on the um, of the competition. Of which I've asked you to name one thing Liberty Media will announce for Formula One over the next year, and you're going to get five points for this because it's just completely open to you and less restricted um just to clarify it's the announcement that has to come next year so even if they say next year in may that they're gonna add a fifth wheel to all cars in 2025 that still counts it's because it was announced next year john t what are your thoughts i actually thought quite sensibly about this one we've seen a lot more from the 360 camera we know they've all got on the nose they said they're going to come up with some way that you can actually view it through VR headsets or you know the VR um, Samsung Galaxy attachment that you can get so you can actually view probably a replay through that which would be awesome let's be honest yeah I like this question I, th- I thought that was a very sensible answer much more than whatever I did which I can't remember but I'm sure I will uh, Dan what are you thinking uh, well yeah I went a little bit more out there <laughs> uh, by the way um, I picked I picked only one of yours the first one the first one okay that's cool okay so i'll, I'll, I'll tell you i, I initially thought I'll, I'll say no drs but i thought you know, that's a little bit boring you know so i went to bed on it i slept on it and i thought i need to think of something a little bit crazy liberty media they don't stick to the book so what i've come up with is the f1 world cup right <laughs> a little bit more crazy than yours john t um, and what the idea is is that there's a new championship we got our, we got our driver's championship we got our constructors championship and we got the world cup and what it is, is a tally for the points for each nation. So for the UK, we've got Hamilton, Norris, Russell. For Finland, you've got Raikkonen and Bottas. And it's just a new funky way that Liberty Media are going to try and change things up in Formula One. So a little bit out there, but I, I want to see it. I think it's uh, <laughs> daft, but it's the kind of thing Liberty would do. That's exactly what I thought when I read it. I thought it's completely l- ludicrous, but so are Liberty Media. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sean? Well, mine's boring, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it? I was going to put grid giraffes, but I fought the temptation on that one. I just went with minimum two pit stops because I've got this feeling that if we have a a bit of a boring race in Australia, as we saw in 2018, we're going to get a knee-jerk reaction to it. Everyone's going to be screaming for changes, and they're just going to go minimum two pit stops from 2020 in just just like they did with the Aero Rex for 2019, just kind of in a big panic and didn't pay any attention to the three awesome races we got after Australia, if that makes sense. Yeah, totally see where you're coming from. Um, probably, probably the safest answer on the board, but we'll see. Although, actually, Jontis, Jontis was I, I creative can see Jontis coming yeah, true. I really can. I can see it. I'll tell you what I did. Um, mine's probably the least safe answer, which is they're going to start bringing out drone cameras to fly over the track during the race. Uh, I think that's exactly the kind of bonkers thing they'll do, which will probably cause a crash, and then they'll stop doing that. But that's what my prediction is. Not at the British Grand Prix because it will shut half the country down. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some saying they're already doing the VR thing. I've Ooh. never seen it. But if they are, then I'll have to try and call it something else in before the season. All right. Yeah, if they are, then I'll come back to you for that one. Um, okay, this is our 19th question. 
as far as I remember off the top of my head, in which I asked how many races will be confirmed for the 2020 calendar? Um, this needs to be confirmed basically by December, by the end of the season, by the last race. Um, it's another question where you'll get three points for exactly the right number, two points, one out, and one point for two out. Uh, I think we're going to have quite similar answers, but Dan, what have you gone with? I've gone with 22. Uh, nothing too crazy, nothing too out there. There's still a lot of backlash about having a crazy long calendar, and there's still circuits like Miami where they're really struggling to push them through, so I think they're going to try and build on the calendar, but nothing crazy so i've been a bit boring once again and i've gone just 22 and sean in the long run it will go to 25 i can see them doing that but for 2020 i think 23 seems about right i think miami i'm not convinced that's going to happen but we've got um oh, i've got vietnam haven't we that's going to happen i think silverstone will be saved there are question marks about i think monza is one that's questioned and possibly brazil as well but i think they'll get saved because they are just f1 aren't they so yeah the only one i'd maybe query is germany but i think 23 seems about right yeah all pretty safe answers i've also gone with 23 uh i had a bit of a kerfuffle in my brain about this because i know they're thinking about vietnam they're thinking about miami and other places but then i started thinking well which ones are going to be dropped are they going to start taking ones off but i i sort of went with they're going to try and shove in as many races as possible so i'm going with 23 and jaunty I've also gone with 22. We've got the confirmed Vietnam. And sadly, I don't think they'll save Silverstone, but they'll bring something else in, probably Zambor or Aston. Yeah, they're definitely looking at races to capitalise on um, Max Verstappen's popularity. But Okay, well, we won't know for a while, but I think those are all pretty safe and sensible answers. Which brings us on to our very meta final question. Who will win this prediction challenge that we just went through? Um, five points for this. So this could this could be a game changer. Um, and this is only based on the first 19 questions. So um, it can't go into a sort of weird infinite loop where it um, counteracts itself. So, Sean, who have you gone with? Um, well, me, obviously, but that decision was taken before my cock up, quite frankly, on question <laughs> four. Uh, but yeah, I'm quite confident with my answers. I know some are a bit boring and a little bit safe, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to go me. Now, I've gone with John T. Because what? he speaks with a calm confidence that just charms me in and makes me believe everything he says. Are you insane? Um, <laughs> <laughs> am I insane? Because, John T, what have you gone with? Uh, me <laughs> it's the obvious choice you always pick yourself you you've gone totally left field what's wrong with you have i dan not picking yourself that's a terrible thing to do i've gone with jaunty as well <laughs> what <Yeah>. <laughs> oh you're all regretting it now he knows his stuff he knows his stuff but then when he starts saying reno and 10,000 people on the podium, I'm starting to get a little bit panicked. So if John C ends up getting all that right, at least we're going to get some bonus points as well. So it's sort of a sensible choice in the end, but I, I believe in John C. And if John C. People have accused me of drinking in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> if John C. gets everything right, we'll at least have an amazing season with the stuff he's brought out. <laughs> Is this all based on the clerk thing? I don't yeah. know. It just... I believed in you, John T. Well, it could still come true. Um, now, here's the thing. Guys, um, and you know this, but you may have forgotten this because I told this to you like a month ago. Um, this competition isn't just about us four. There's a fifth challenger. Oh. It's not me. It's not just me, Sean, Dan, and John T. Yeah, you remember who it is. But it's the audience as well. Oh. Oh, well, you didn't know who it was. That's I you right. Were going to bring an next Matty G on or something. <laughs> yeah. like that. Uh, I thought you were going to say Hazel, Hazel. To be honest, no, no. Well, no. I would have brought all the actual physical people in. No, I have put this question into a Google form um, that anyone can access and fill in over the next ten days. Um, I'll put the link in the description, or you can um, follow it right now if you're desperate. Um, and what I'm going to do. That's a little 
preview of what the questionnaire looks like. Everyone who wants to participate answer the questions by January 13th and the audience is going to be one big amalgamated mega person. <laughs> so I'm going to take an average of the numerical questions. I'm going to do some clever things with the ones that aren't numerical. Um, for example, with that question you can see there with name every driver steps on the podium, I'll just take them in descending order. Um, so if six drivers step on the podium, I'll take the top six of that descending order and then do the plus and minus points depending on how correct they are. Um, in the chat, there'll also be a link to the PDF with all the questions and how many points they're worth if you just need that for reference. Um, because I don't think you want to watch an hour long video to remind yourself of what the hell this was all about. Um, so yeah, if you in the audience want to take part and think as a, a mass ensemble of people, you can beat the four of us then please fill out that form and submit it by January the 13th, which I think is next Saturday or Sunday. Um, how confident do you feel now? The rest of you, by which I mean the three of you. Not very. Not, not very, no. <laughs> <laughs> There's more of them than there are us. Yeah, but, um, but they're all crazy. Oh yeah, they're F1 fans. <laughs> they have to be. Two of you pick me. Who are you to call them crazy? <laughs> the audience might pick you as well. You just don't know. Uh, ignoring the audience, how confident do you feel against the rest of us? Um, I'll start with you, Dan, because you're the highest on my list of people I can see. Um, oh, I think we've all picked a nice array of answers. None of us are too samey. I think any of us could win it. Um, I don't know how confident I am. I really, I think John T's onto a winner. I'm glad I picked him as my bonus point. I think he's done some crazy answers, but knowing John T, like he said, that Leclerc thing he did last year, that was that was mega, and he's going to do it again this year. Yeah, John T, what do you think? Uh, I think I'd need to come up with another answer because the VR thing was announced and tried. So I've got to come up with something else. But the others, there's just all hope that it really does happen. Yeah, there is a lot of blind optimism in your answers, but I really hope it comes true. Um, I'll get in contact with you to change your answer a bit, just um, so that you're not automatically wrong. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, we'll have a chat. Uh, Sean, I think you've gone safe in some and wild with others, like that Hamilton question. You just never know. You just <laughs> never know. It's Formula One. Um, yeah. Uh, if we ignore question four, I'm quite happy with my answers. But again, as if people follow my channel, they'll know that I am generally very confident with my predictions and they go monumentally wrong very quickly. So I've probably jinxed a lot of people. Um, but if I have done that, especially with the podium one, we might get a bit of a crazy season. So John T might be spot on. Well, just one little point on what my predictions are like. I'd just like to remind everyone that... Uh, on no less than six occasions in 2018, I forgot to do my predictions for the fantasy F1. So make of that what you will. Well, at least you actually made predictions this time. That's a good start. True. Um, right. I just let everyone just remind. I think I said it at the top of the, the top of the stream, but I'll tell everyone. So this is a, a, a separate thing from Bingo, which will still be happening because um, Bingo is very very open, and you can say anything you like. Um, that'll be happening in probably a month um and i'm gonna vamp that up a little bit i've actually been very um, pleased to see a lot of people making their own bingo boards and having some fun with that so that's very exciting um if you guys are just able to hang on a little bit i can go till 10 past maybe answer some questions from the chat if i can keep up with the chat you guys got five minutes yeah. in you yeah sure. I, I don't mm -hmm. like streams overrun <laughs> <laughs> well tough you're in my house I'm amazed actually we actually ran pretty much to time um, someone had a question one of you guys <laughs> yeah I've got one yeah John T what's your question uh, considering I genuinely didn't know and my things already happened can I just start with five points start with twelve points five points five points you're only off to five so question 18 um, no because it wasn't announced in 2019 so you can either start with zero points or think of something else. Oh, well. <laughs> nice try, though. <laughs> um, God, I forgot to look at the chat after I said I'll take a question. Wow, they're awful. 
Oh, thanks, uh, Queen Ash, for um, the super chat thing. I don't know how any of this works, by the way. I've got this thing popping up, but thank you for your, your donation. That's that, that's nice. I wasn't paying attention at all. Uh, oh, God, all these questions. I've got a quick one. Which race are you going to this year? I'm not going to any Formula One races, but I am going to the Monaco Formula E pre. Um, Sean, you're going to Silverstone, aren't you? Yes, I'll be at Silverstone again. It could be the last one, so I've definitely got to go and enjoy that. It's a good weekend, so looking forward to that. Are the, either of you two going to a Formula One race? I'm doing my best to get to Silverstone this year because there's so many of other people involved with F1 work going, including Sean himself and Dan, I presume. So I need to get there. You see, I'd like to, but, you know, being a student, you don't really have that much spare cash to go see fancy cars drive around circuits. So it's a little bit open-ended, but we'll see. i got a question here for you, Dan. What is it about Grosjean that made you a fan? Well, he's, he's the best driver, you know, for starts. I mean, I could go on forever, so I don't want to give everyone an essay. But the, the brief description is that I was a big Lotus F1 fan, and so I just sort of followed him from there. So that's what it was, really. To uh, quote him from the Christmas stream, he says he's got a sexy beard and he's a handsome fella. <laughs> well, that is also <laughs> true. <laughs> that is also true. Um, here's a bit of a relevant question. How much cooperation are you planning on the coming year, the four of us? Um, I mean, I can't speak for the rest of you. I'm hope Hopefully, I'll appear on uh, the F1 word a couple of times in the next year, maybe, if they'll have me. Um, I, I'd, li I'd like to answer that as positively as possible and say as much as possible because that would just be awesome i think we we have good fun good banter and we get on well so yeah I, I, as much as possible let's be positive yeah i'm hoping for that as well i am um, i'm planning some me going live is not gonna be a common thing but i am planning some live things it should be a bit of fun um i might try and mix the people up a bit because why not but um i like you guys you guys seem pretty cool you didn't you know swear all over my stream so that's bonus points for all of you yeah we, we saved the swearing for uh, the the bloopers at Christmas <laughs> I'd like to see that one um, Sean how do you do this how do you read the chat and manage a stream at the same time I am just baffled to try to scroll through all this very badly <laughs> very <laughs> badly uh, which is why on my question bits you tend to get a lot of um uh, um <laughs> Uh, fair enough. Right, here's a here's a question that's actually probably important. So, so will you tell us our answers after you work them out? That's for the um, the audience filling out the questionnaire. Uh, yes, I will. What's going to happen is after after the thirteenth, I'll um, close the questionnaire for answers. I'll amalgamate all the answers, and then I'll make a video in which I um, go through all the audience answers and um, compare them to what's already been put down. And I will return to this a few times through the year to see how we're all getting along i don't think we need to go live every time because that probably won't have much to say about it but i will sort of like with the bingo keep up with his predictions see who's doing the best and make fun of john t losing horribly that seems the most likely but that also includes two of you so i'm aware of it um a couple, few people are asking who we think the champions are going to be i didn't put that in the questionnaire because i thought it was a bit of a boring question but seeing as they're asking who do you think will be champion next year uh, John T again not yeah being optimistic a little bit but I honestly think the clerk's going to take it I Ooh. think he's going to beat Vettel and Vettel won't be able to handle the pressure again and he's just going to just take that title that Ferrari put all their eggs in one basket and they'll get it from a different basket wow then. Vettel's going to be sick um, what about you Sean what do you think I think it will be a Ferrari, but this is... I'm going to talk about this again in the future at some point. This is a huge season for Sebastian Vettel. He cannot afford any mistakes this year because Leclerc is going to be so much closer to him than Raikkonen was, and he's not his best bud either. So he's going to be more likely to send it up the inside than maybe Kimi would have done. So uh, I'm probably going to say Vettel, but we're talking by very fine margins. Leclerc has got a great shot, and don't rule out those Red Bulls either because you just never know with Honda. Lots of reason for Ferrari. What about you, Dan? What are you thinking? 
Yeah, ah, it's, just, it's a bit boring saying the same thing, but I think Ferrari are going to be the team to beat, so I'm going to go with Leclerc as well. But like I said a little bit earlier on, I can see it going right down to the wire in Abu Dhabi, and I can see it being Vettel, Leclerc and Hamilton. I think it's going to be very close. I was going to go with the Ferrari answer, but I'm actually going to go with Hamilton now. Um, not to be too boring, but my my, my reasoning is you've, you've spoken all about the closeness between Leclerc and Vettel, and I think that could that could play against them if they get in each other's way if they take points off each other which will leave Hamilton who will probably have a bigger margin over Bottas than those two to maybe run out a bit of a margin we, sh- we shall see but I'm going to go with Hamilton now but I don't get any points for that it doesn't count so there's no risk there I should have gone with Red Bull yeah <laughs> uh, I'll ask one more question Um. oh okay bit of Ferrari politics here someone asked if Leclerc wins a race before Vettel will that affect the World Drivers Championship by which I'm guessing they're thinking of will Ferrari change their strategy from being all about Vettel um, but I don't think necessarily it will be all about Vettel but uh, Dan what do you think yeah I think they're going to completely change things up this year Ferrari I don't think they're really going to look at it as a number one driver and number two driver I see it more as if we say get to Monza around the halfway point of the season and say Leclerc isn't settling in as well as we all hope he will, then I think maybe then they'll decide or even the other way around. You know, if Vettel's really struggling halfway through the season, they could switch it up. But I think if Leclerc gets the first win, I don't think initially that'll have much of an effect. But it's it's a good thought. Yeah, similar thoughts, John, to your... Um, no. I <laughs> think they will go with whoever takes their first win. Ooh. They've got to. Ferrari's all about their legacy, going all the way back to the first race that they didn't take part in because of money, but we'll ignore that. Um, you know, they've been there since the start. They're the only team who's been there since the start. And they've got to win next year because if they don't, this will be the first decade ever that they have not taken either title. Wow. Good stat. Uh, fair enough. And Sean, what about the politics of Ferrari? I would be surprised if they side with Leclerc that early. I think I'm with Dan on that one. Give it a few races, maybe mid-season. But I guess it depends on on where Mercedes are. If Lewis Hamilton's pretty much dominating and Vettel and Leclerc are getting in each other's way, they're going to have to pull rank at some point. So um, I'd be surprised if they, they do favour him after one or two wins. But I, I don't think it'll be completely out of the question but I do, I do want to say hijacking your stream as well by the way um, <laughs> whilst we're talking about Ferrari just massive happy birthday to Michael Schumacher my all time Formula 1 hero and legend and obviously hashtag keep fighting Michael very good point there's plenty of great articles on Michael Schumacher um, come out today um, that you should all go and read and check out um, I think we'll call it there because this obviously wasn't a Q&A type stream but I just thought I'd grab a couple seeing as I've never done this before and people were asking a lot of questions thank you so much for uh, playing and taking part and I very much look forward to see how wrong we all are in the coming months Um, yeah thanks for coming along no thanks for having us thoroughly enjoyed it it was nice to be on the other end for a change so uh, yeah thank you very much yeah hopefully much more relaxed because I have been stressed out (laughs) (laughs) I, I know the feeling um, thanks very much to you, the audience, for coming along. Please do fill out that form. I'd love to see what your answers are and uh, look forward to reading them out back to you in a couple of weeks. Um, I think we're going to call it there. Thanks very much, everyone, for coming along, participating, seeing our ridiculous answers. Thank you for having us on. Thanks for inviting me to do this. It's, it's been, been great. great yeah. Well, thanks very much for coming along. Um, it's great. Right. Good night, everyone, or afternoon, or wherever you are in the world. I will see you on my channel at some point. I don't know how to sign off a live stream, so I'm just going to say goodbye.